Thank you, Tom, for this invitation. Also because I will give the European response probably for the next two weeks. And then we'll be over. Now, I, I was trying to think what should I bring here as a message while, you know, since I saw this title in the, in, the, in the program. And honestly, let me start with the number. You know how many novel patent applications do you have per year in Europe for medical devices? Those are yours, but globally, 12,000. Okay, we have 12,000 novel patent applications. This means 1,000 per month. This means that if you assume in Europe we work 20 days per month, this means 50 novel patent applications per day. And if we assume that in Europe we work 10 hours from the very eastern to the very western part, this means that while we are having this session, five novel patent applications have been filed. While we started this session to uh, Paolo, which will close it, we will have had five new IP patent applications. Now, they will not become all medical devices. No, probably one out of 100, but still. It means that we are going to face a tsunami of medical device. A tsunami of medical device is the reason why WHO stated clearly that we need more biomedical engineers. And by WHO, biomedical and clinical, we are all as the same family. And then Europe responded to that in 2014, and they state biomedical engineering is not a subset of medicine, it's the other way around. It's modern medicine which is uh, progressing because of the output of biomedical engineering, which are medical devices. So we need to learn and reinforce our learning and train our early career colleagues towards design, because we are the one which designs medical devices, as friends from chemistry are the guys which design drugs. So we stay to medical devices as they stay to drugs. But also, we need to be teaching our students regulatory frameworks, because we cannot delegate this. Can you imagine someone preparing our new regulations on medical devices without having our knowledge? And then obviously, the assessment. We have had a nice session, we'll have more tomorrow. Okay, I can be biased, okay, yes, I'm biased. But we need more biomedical engineers with knowledge in health technology assessment. And then again, management. And should this be just clinical engineering? No, probably more. This is the future of clinical engineering. And taking care of whatever it is that is possible of medical devices. That's obviously our responsibility as well. So now, if I have to consider all that, clearly, we have to understand that none of us has all the knowledge. Adriana was saying several times today, we need to get out, we need to go in hospital to become effective clinical engineers. That's correct, but that's not enough. Then we need to acquire competencies on regulatory framework, assessment, which is not done in hospital, is done in agencies. So none of us has all the knowledge to cover all of that. So the only take home message is never split this community because we are learning, and I'm not, I'm more a biomedical engineer than a clinical engineer. I'm learning from you guys and you are learning from the academics and we together are learning from those making regulation or assessment. If we split this community, we are making a very damaged to ourselves. So in my opinion, this is why we are going so well and so fast. We are in Italy. I can mention cases like, uh, you know, Leonardo was uh, into the Bottega of Verrocchio, and that's the way we were training people century ago. Now, if you are lucky and you are Leonardo, and you are lucky enough to learn from Verrocchio, you get out and you are a genius. But out of this Bottega, which produced many of the main artists in the world, how many other Bottega have been producing just, you know, wall painting. So you can be lucky, you can do all of your things in hospital and train people in hospital, but if you're not lucky, then you cannot go good training. So we need to work together on that and, uh, and be peer on that. So we need cooperation because none of us has the knowledge, so we need to put our efforts together, listening each other, and try to understand what we need to pass to the next generation. Because I can tell you something, I can probably sit with Krishna and we can both decide what we need to teach to train our students for doing our job for the next five years. But this will not be enough, because in 10 years' time, they will be doing things that the two of us cannot even dream. So we need to be very open-minded still ground with the theory and the knowledge that we have about mathematical modeling, uh, internet of things, and computing, but then give them 
the skills to do their job today, but the mindset to be prepared to create the future, which is something that, thanks to God, it won't be on our shoulder. I mean, you know, near future, but not forever. So, as Christian already said, core topics, essential, those are must. So, if we don't have enough knowledge in core topics, probably we should never teach biomedical engineering. But then the elective should be really reflecting what we do, what we know how to do. And by we, I mean our, uh, our university hospital, our city hospital, our academics. So, we need to be clear understanding that there is a core set of topics and skill if we don't have that, probably we cannot teach biomedical engineering. And then we have the elective, which should reflect really our peculiarity. And that's the reason why I send my students to Ernest in Florence, because they do things that I don't, and so on, so far. What else do I have in my notes? The way we teach nowadays to those students is different from the way we have been learning. They are natural learner. They learn to play video games, and they never read the manual. So that's the way this new generation is growing. So the way we are now teaching, especially medical device, is let's give them problems, let's give them the key skills to face a problem in a systematic manner, and let them learn by doing. Now, is this in hospital? Is it in manufacturing setting? Is it in our lab? We need labs, okay. But that's the way the new generation of learners are learning. We, for, I mean, forget about we talking the learning. We now talk about learning, not anymore teaching. So it's up to them to ask us what they want to know. Give them a problem, and they will come to you even during night, you know, ringing your bell because, hey, I got this idea. What do you think about that? Obviously, there are global needs, but local problems. To do that, okay, I'm sure Professor Krishnan has the, 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 the most wealthy department in the world, so we have no problem to have, and, and we do in Warwick, we are a very wealthy university, I have very few number of students comparing to my income, so we have the state-of-the-art lab, but it's not the same all over the world, so we need to be ready to do things which can be, you know, satisfying global needs, but being very aware of local problems and limits. For instance, we've been hearing about certification, and I now listen about certification in Southern Europe. That's a radical. Our degree in Southern Europe are legally recognized. It means that legally recognition is stronger than certification. So what is working for me now in the UK, we have degrees which are not legally recognized, but then national body which give us accreditation which allow me to call myself an engineer. That's not the situation in Italy. The ministry tells you if you want to create a degree in clinical engineering, in biomedical engineering, that's what you have to teach. If you don't have that, you cannot call yourself a biomedical So we need to be aware that the world is a, is a very complex place and there are huge differences, thanks to God, and we cannot adopt one model, as Krishnan was saying. So last take-home message from my point of view is that your specificity is what makes you strong. I am towards health technology assessment more than other things, as you know me. But I will never lose my knowledge and my characteristic of being, you know, a, a screwdriver lover. Then now I do management of medical device eventually. But I will never let them forget that I'm an engineer. Because if you do that, people with, uh, you know, uh, coming from a business school, probably they can manage things better than we do if we lose our identity. So I agree with teach them health technology assessment. I do that, but balance this with proper knowledge of workshop. Because if they don't first see the workshop, they will never be as effective as they should in doing health technology assessment or policy making. This was my last. Thank you.